more than two dozen current and former Liberty University officials have now come out uh, privately uh, and exposed the truth about Jerry Falwell Jr. So now they talked to Politico and they and they talked about how uh, they have a growing disenchantment of Falwell Jr. and the way he, he runs uh, the the, uh, the university. <laughs> it was harder to get out than it should have been. Uh, now, they even went so far as to describe his handling of the university as a, quote, dictatorship. We'll get to that. All right. So now, many university employees, past and present, had agreed to speak anonymously to reporter Brandon Ambrosino, a Liberty graduate for an article published by Politico. Now, that's despite signing non-disclosure agreements. So every employee who works at Liberty has to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And so if it's revealed that they talk to Politico, that they talk to the press, they could get into serious legal trouble for what they have to say. Now, that means what they have to say is pretty big. In fact, one longtime current employee with ties to the Falwells said, quote, I feel like I'm betraying them in some way. By, by talking to the press, essentially. Quote, but someone's got to tell the freaking truth. Well, I am all for that, man. Tell you what. Uh, now, what is the truth? What is the truth? What's so bad that it gets people who are very clearly close to the family and supporters of the university, people who work for the university, who agree with all this stuff, to start speaking out? Well, the... <laughs> what's being revealed is uh let's get to it i didn't have words okay uh liberty sources have revealed that falwell had a little bit of an interesting nightlife apparently he would party at nightclubs and would graphically discuss his sex life with employees all right you but not horrible hor nothing that we don't expect from republicans already let me give you some details about that first. Now, one former official said, quote, all he wanted to talk about was how we would nail his wife, how she couldn't handle his penis size and stuff of that sort. Okay, TMI, gross. Uh, there was also an alleged picture of Becky Falwell in a French maid uniform that was sent out to Liberty University staff via email by apparently mistake. Yikes. Oh, no, that was supposed to go to the personal trainer, by the way. Um, I, I don't know why. Maybe to show him how good of a job he did by the French maid uniform. Okay. Look, hey, look, some people are into that. Uh, look, unlike uh, people at Liberty University, I'm not going to judge too harshly in the sexual stuff. Interesting. Uh, kind of gross, but not the worst part. No, no, no. There's more. There was also an alleged. Uh, th there was also, more importantly, information that he and his wife had been consolidating power and directing university resources to enrich themselves. Uh, now, these university uh, resources would end up going to real estate projects. Huh. In fact, one senior university official with knowledge of Liberty's finances, said this, quote, we're actually not a school. We're a real estate hedge fund. Interesting for something that says university. Quote, we're not educating. Oh, that's obvious. We're buying real estate every year and taking students' money to do it. Mm, mm, financial corruption. So to me, that's a way bigger scandal than Falwell Jr. being an obvious hypocrite and talking about his sex life and partying all the time. Okay. Again, we expect that hypocrisy, whatever. But no, they're literally taking students' money and not putting into education programs, but they're using it to buy up real estate. And look, let me be honest, and this isn't part of the story, but every time I see people buying up lots of real estate, it makes me think, are they laundering money? That's my question about that. Are they laundering money? Uh, okay, but anyway, now this is supposed to be a nonprofit university, right? But uh, as of late, the last 10 years or so, 
Liberty University has actually grown by leaps and bounds. Now, since the time Falwell Jr. took over after the death of his father, uh, the original Jerry Falwell, founder of the Moral Majority, uh, the university has grown its assets of just at the time, 2007, about $259 million. So that was 2007. That's how many assets they had. Now, their assets surpass $2.5 billion in 2017 and around $3 billion today. All for a nonprofit school, they seem to be buying up a lot of profitable real estate. And, of course, I've got more details into what they're actually uh, building on that real estate, by the way. So now there's a lot of people wondering, where is that money going from the students? Now, according to emails received by Politico, in a university-funded construction and real estate projects that are enriching the Falwell family and their friends. One such project is a Lynchburg shopping center that is owned by the university, but which members of the Falwell family have a personal financial stake in operating. The university owns a shopping center, which is, again, has, has uh, uh, the Falwell family has stakes in it. That's really interesting. Now, in an email dated July 18th of 2012, Falwell informed several university executives that his son, Trey Falwell, was starting a new company to do the management of properties owned by the school. So they buy up all these properties. They, they take student money, admission, buy up properties. And now they have a bunch of properties. And, and Jerry gets the idea, like, wait, wait a minute. Now, who's going to manage those properties? I have an idea. My son's going to do it. My son's going to do it. Now, Trey Falwell, whose given name is Jerry Falwell III, is now vice president of Liberty University, as well as running a company that does the management of properties owned by the school. On August 7th of 2012, Trey registered that privately owned company, JF Management LLC, with Campbell County, Virginia. As the address of its principal office, he gave the location of a house where he and his, Sarah, uh, uh, his wife, Sarah, had resided. Technically, it's his Sarah. That is a clear case of corruption, clearly. Uh, again, uh, buying up all this property and then saying, oh, we need a manager, pointing your son as a manager who also works at the university. I mean, that's obvious, obvious. How much, how, how, how more clear does it have to get? Now, the college, it turns out also, while doing all this other stuff, managed to to, to loan out money to Falwell's friends and family. I mean, come on, man. Now, now they're acting like a bank, not a school. Now, more disturbing revelations, right? And it's not, this is not related to the financial corruption, but actually the atmosphere inside the area. Uh, and one person, as I mentioned, uh, quoted this as being run like a dictatorship, right? Now, they go on to mention, uh, as to several others, um, that there is a culture of fear. In fact, uh, one quote, uh, one person is quoted as saying, nobody craps at the university without Jerry's approval. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing to say, but it's actually really indicative of that culture of fear. In fact, a current university employee who agreed to speak only after purchasing a burner phone Fearing that Falwell was monitoring their communications, said this, <clears throat> everybody is scared for their life. Everybody walks around in fear. Now, several people, and the fear is so palpable across not just the, the, the school, but the entire town. Residents who lack any tie to liberty, but live in the school's hometown of Lynchburg, refused to go on the record for the story, fearing Falwell would take revenge upon them and their families. One former senior university official said, quote, fear is probably his most powerful weapon. One current high-ranking university said this, we're talking about the difference between right and wrong, not even being a Christian, but being a good person versus people who manipulate the system. So, Culture of fear, culture of corruption, uh, and decidedly unchristian-like behavior. Now, it's important to note, 
that these people are not Libby Lib McBleeding Heart, right? These are people who had a huge love for Jerry Falwell and their moral majority. In fact, there was one person that was quoted in the story as saying, when we lost Falwell, it felt like he was losing a father. That's how important they were. But you have the son, Jerry Falwell Jr., who is not following in his father's footsteps, apparently. So, again, these are people who mostly agree with the mission and have the most to lose. And they're telling you about his corruption. Falwell Jr. is 100% corrupt and a hypocrite. And not only does he rule his college with an iron fist, but the town as well. I mean, this, I mean, there's probably going to be more that comes out about this. So it's a developing story, but it kind of really does show you what religion in the wrong hands is truly capable of. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.